It ain't the left side or the right side. Then it must be the fifth side. It ain't the left side or the right side. Thank you, Solo D. Welcome to another episode of On the Fence Side. Here with Kat and Paul Pickin. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Spreaker, iTunes, YouTube, and on iHeartRadio. We're catching up on some Miami Dolphins news recently here as we head into the third preseason game against the Philadelphia Eagles. First things first, Ray Malaluga, the former Cincinnati Bengal, eight-year veteran, 104 starts over the last four over the last eight years. Last year, he only started six games. Was actually benched for former. Miami Dolphin, Carlos Dansby, Paul, one year, $900,000 worth of risk. Completely. And, you know, one thing I, I do have to give us a little bit of credit because we actually had the story out there on Twitter before any of the Miami beat reporters and everything else. So I'm going to give us a little pat on the back there for that. But to be honest with you, it's, it's not only the fact that it's 900,000, they're able to invoke the clause where it only counts 600,000 against the salary cap. I think it's 615 exactly. So it's definitely a good risk to take here. He's not going to be asked to be out there on third downs. They're going to be in the nickel probably 60% of the time anyway. So to bring in a run-stuffing linebacker like Maluga to play some first and second downs for you, it can't hurt. It can only help. And at the very worst, he's embracing the Dolphins' culture, and he can serve as a mentor to some of these young players like Rake McMillan, like Mike Hull, like Neville Hewitt. Because even if he hasn't had that big accomplished career, he is a run-stuffing linebacker, and that's where he excels, and that's exactly what Miami needed to plug and play here. So great pickup for the team, very minimal risk, high reward. He was a pretty vaunted player coming out of college. I'm happy with this move. I didn't like the signing all that much when I first heard it, but then when I heard one year, 900000 I was a little more accepting of it. If, if, bottom line is if, if Maluga comes in, plays 25 to 30% of defensive snaps, and is that run-stepping speed, middle linebacker at least moves the needle forward a little bit on that, then I think that's a good thing. I think this really still increases the role of Neville Hewitt, especially in pass defense, because you probably don't want Malaluga and Lawrence Timmons out there uh, at the same time, because if that's the case, I think you're going to see teams start to pass a lot more. And in other Dolphins news, and it's not good news, seems to be a common theme here throughout August. Tony Lippett tears his ACL. Poor kid, 24 years old, moved from wide receiver to cornerback. Uh, four interceptions last year. And uh, but I tell you what, you know, uh, Tony Lippett was projected to be somewhere on the depth chart between two and five. It seemed like he was going to be buried behind Byron Maxwell, Xavier Howard, possibly Alteron Werner. I don't think this is going to be all that big of a loss, even though it's it's obviously not a good thing Lippett went down. You know, I, I think the Dolphins have enough bodies there in the secondary. They do. I mean, if you look back at the game last week, it was pretty impressive what the corners were able to do, and that's without Tony Lippett. I mean, you had Xavier Howard pulled in an interception. Cordray Tackersley had probably one of the best interceptions I've ever seen. And then you had Byron Maxwell forcing a pair of fumbles, and Alteron Werner looked good. So, for me, it, the cornerback position is really a deep position of strength right now. So, as much as I was looking forward to seeing Tony Lippett this year, at least it's not as devastating as the Rake McMillan one looked to be at first, as the Ryan Tannehill looked to be at first, because they didn't really have to go out and get anybody to backfill for Lippett. Lippett's kind of a nice to have at this point, because he can go out there, he can start for you, play a great game, but he can also be that backup that comes in and and helps you out at times, et cetera, because we all know teams do burn through a few cornerbacks throughout the season typically. And you know what? It, they're one one chair less deep, but then again, it gives them a chance to possibly have like a Jordan Lucas or somebody else make the team that really seems to be playing well that, that was going to be a victim of a numbers game. So they can see a little more what they've got down the, down the depth chart there. I completely agree. Uh, you know, it looks right now like Werner's going to be that nickel back. Tanker's League is, is going to be the fourth cornerback. Bobby McCain probably squeezes onto the roster. Yeah, you might get Jordan Lucas in there, too, as your sixth cornerback. And now next year, you, you've got a healthy competition with more depth at that cornerback spot. Obviously, not a good thing Tony Lippett got hurt, but if there was a, a position that the Dolphins could have an injury at, I think cornerback was one of the few positions on that team. Uh, in other news, too, Isaiah Ford, down for the year with an injury, and now the Dolphins are the only team in the NFL with two drafted rookies already on injured reserve. Yeah, 
I mean, this is no real surprise. I know when we did our 53-man projections, we both kind of projected that this is where Ford was going to end up, given the, the state of things. So it's not a huge surprise. But you know what? Again, it's just like with Tony Lippett going down. Isaiah Ford, as much as I like the kid, was on the bubble as potentially being affected by the numbers game. So at least now he gets a little bit more time getting that NFL-level education as the state of the game. So maybe next year when, when he does come back, he's able to make a little bit more wave in uh, training camp and possibly make this roster next season because he is a young kid that I like that I didn't want to see disappear in a numbers game. I did want to see Stringfellow and or Drew Morgan make the roster, and I, and I still do. It allows the Dolphins now and their 53-man roster to get one or both on, onto the roster. Uh, Isaiah Ford will come back next year, and I think he's got some natural receiving skills that uh, are going to land him a spot in 2018. You can land a spot as a subscriber of ours here on a lot of different media outlets, Facebook, Twitter, or iTunes, YouTube, and on iHeartRadio. You're listening to On the Fin Side here with Kat and Paul Pickin. Continue to listen to us here as we enter the 2017 regular season. We're going to have a lot of great breakdowns. And if it's not on the right side and it's not on the left side, it is on the fin side. Solo D, take us home. It ain't the left side or the right side. Then it must be the fin side. Fin side. It ain't the left side, left side or the right, right side. side. Then it must be the fin side. Left. Listen, Dolphins fans across the land all tuning in to see what we're